ladies and gentlemen, to an exciting broadcast of Jerusalem's Gate. I'm so psyched up right now. Uh, as we know, uh, somehow a leak opinion uh, was uh, uh, made public and published in Politico, I believe it was. And it, it states that the opinion of the court that they're going to overturn Road versus Ways. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, now, this is just a draft uh, coming uh, from CNBC. Uh, Supreme Court says late abortion draft is authentic. Roberts orders investigation into leak. Okay. First of all, I would say thank you for the Christians that are living and many Christians that died praying that this abortion holocaust in. Uh, I can't tell you how many millions and millions of Christians have prayed fervently year after year uh, for this horrendous atrocity to come to an end. Uh, it's staying our country. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the main signs that we started drifting away from the Lord and becoming an, uh, and not becoming a Christian nation as we were formed to be. Uh, now, uh, it was leaked. It's not customary for opinion uh, drafts to be leaked prior to the announcement. It's not, uh, it's not uh, customary. Now, you know that immediately after the uh, leak of this uh, opinion, uh, there have been massive protesting, and they're geared up for even more massive protesting. They even protesting in the neighborhoods uh, of the Supreme Court justices. Uh, they're putting graffiti on churches, uh, desecrating God's house. And uh, uh, it's a darn shame that we have to pray for the protection of Supreme Court justices in the United States. Uh, but I can assure you this is a, an attempt to strike fear and uh, the Supreme Court justices that ruled in favor of overturning it. Uh, and we pray uh, that uh, they stay strong. Uh, they're doing an incredible work, uh, proven that uh, it is uh, wrong to kill 2,000 children a day. Uh, pray for the protection of Supreme Court justices. Uh, that they will have the strength to finalize it and make their uh, uh, final uh, ruling and make it public officially of uh, their decision. Uh, the the opposition that supports the abortion holy cause are making some very strong statements, some very strong statements to try to strike fear into the Supreme Court justices that were bold and brave enough to take a position for Christ. Uh, First, a position for the law, but in so doing, uh, the decision for Christ, uh, knowing that uh, our country was formed to be a Christian nation. But it's, it's wrong. It, even if you take out the Christianity part, uh, the murder of 2,000 children a day in the United States for many, many decades is absolutely wrong. It's very wrong. And I'm so glad that the Supreme Court justices that voted against uh, uh, this uh, Road versus Wade and to overturn it uh, uh, took a bold position to protect the, the child in the womb. Because who's going to protect the child in the womb? Well, evidently, uh, the majority of the Supreme Court did. And uh, that is a fantastic decision, and that's a huge leap back to being a Christian nation again. It's a huge leap uh, to return it as a Christian nation. I got a, uh, a uh, video for you. Uh, it talks about what's going on, the protesting and such like that. Uh, please watch it. It's only a few minutes long. Uh, again, God gets all the glory, and I thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. I thank you uh, for putting a brave heart in those Supreme Court justices to, to protect the child in the womb. Uh, and this is a huge, once again, it's a huge leap back to being a Christian nation. Uh, but uh, we got to pray. We had to pray that the fear tactics that were 
uh, from the protests and doesn't change any minds, and they stay strong, and God watches over them. Uh, and uh, I can assure you, this leak uh, was was a, a leak uh, that needs to be investigated uh, to find out uh, who leaked this uh, uh, report and how the protests and uh, quickly started thereafter. So it makes you wonder. Uh, but with that and said, here comes the video. Remember, we love you, and God gets all the glory for this, ladies and gentlemen. This is a huge step back, uh, turning back to a Christian nation again. And I know the Lord is happy with that decision. Uh, once it's made final, and uh, uh, it's up to the, the, the battle's not uh, uh, over, it's up to the states. But a lot of states are leaning towards uh, uh, protecting the child in the womb. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we love you. Here comes the video. In Colorado, a Catholic church is dealing with vandalism for the second time in the past seven months. The church was defaced with pro-abortion slogans. Graffiti covered the church's doors and walls as well as a white truck in the parking lot. Red paint was used to deface a statue and at least one window appears to be shattered. Joining us now is Mary Margaret Olahan, DC correspondent at The Daily Wire. Mary Margaret, great to see you again. Uh, a lot to get to today, but first, I do want to get your reaction to the church vandalism that I just mentioned. And do you think that we'll see more of this as we await the official and final opinion from the Supreme Court? We will absolutely see more of this. I mean, this, this vandalism in Colorado is just the first of multiple incidents that we've heard about over the last couple of days, and I am sure it's not the last one. For example, in Frederick, Maryland, I've learned that there's a pro-life clinic that has been severely defaced, and we're hearing about defacements around the city as pro-lifers put up signs and th that are being taken down by pro-abortion activists. So no, this is just the first of many incidents I think that we'll hear about, particularly related to Catholic churches. As we know, there's already protesters planning events in Catholic churches on Mother's Day to protest against this possibility that Roe v. Wade will be overturned. Yeah, I wanted you to, if you don't mind, talk a little bit more about that and really the safety concerns of the justices right now. Yes, there's a lot of people that are expressing concerns about the safety of the justices. As we know, these pro-abortion groups are really riling up protesters. I've been down to the Supreme Court. I've seen these crowds. It's a totally different picture than what we've seen in the past. These pro-abortion protesters are, they're not just worried, they're frenzied. They're really, really concerned that Roe v. Wade is about to be overturned. And so they're directing these protesters to go and march in the neighborhoods to the homes of these Supreme Court justices that the protesters are calling extremist, these conservative justices. That includes Amy Coney Barrett, Justice Alito, D Clarence Thomas, Brett Kavanaugh, Chief Justice Roberts. They're directing all these protesters to go to their homes, which is a very, very dangerous thing to do. We don't know how these crowds will react. We don't know how many people are going to go. We don't know if the justices and their families will be home. So that's, that's one thing that's going on. But then this call to go to Catholic churches to protest, against abort, uh, protest in support of abortion on Mother's Day. I don't know how the irony is lost on them there, that they're going to go advocate for abortion in a Catholic church on a day when we celebrate mothers. It's just, it's so bizarre. So we, and a lot of these are being pushed by this group, Ruth Sent Us, which is a group that supposedly is commemorating Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So we've got all that going on. Then Shut Down DC, which is an activist group that's very, very left wing. They're also advocating for protesters to go to, to justices' homes. So we're going to be keeping an eye on this and seeing what's going on. I'll be there. I'll be monitoring these protests and seeing how these protesters act, whether they're committing acts of vandalism, whether the justices are home. I hope they're not. I hope they take their families somewhere else. Yeah, it's it's hard to even, you know, it's hard to wrap your mind around all of this. It's so, so, so concerning. Um, something else I'm going to talk about is, you know, you know, some of our nation's top leaders, including Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and President Joe Biden, well, they have yet to condemn this leak. Mary Margaret, what do you think that signals? Well, this leak is unprecedented. I mean, we've never in the modern history of the court, never have we seen a leak like this. And yet Democratic leadership is loath 
to weigh in on it, to, to condemn this leak. And in fact, we've seen a lot of leftist activists praising the leaker, comparing the leaker to a hero. And the reason for this, and the reason the Democrats are not condemning the leak, what I'm told, is that they wanted this to happen. They like that the leak has happened, and now all these pro-abortion crowds and pro-abortion pro protesters can protest against this decision. And as I've been told by activists like Judicial Crisis Network and uh, Carrie Severino, these people are telling me that this is an active campaign to intimidate and pressure the court to change its opinion. We've heard from Chuck Schumer in the past. He said, I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have unleashed the whirlwind and you will pay the price. That was in reference to abortion. So we have a lot of intimidation coming at these justices. Uh, and now we're seeing these pro-abortion protesters headed to their homes. I've heard other commentators say that now is the time to release the decision before something bad happens, before the justices can be pressured into changing their minds. So we'll see how soon that decision comes and and what that decision is. Yeah, well, Mary Margaret, you know, always so great to be with you. Wish we had more time, but thank you so much for your work. Thank you.